What can $1,500 get you using Intel or Ryzen when building a computer? In this video, we're going to look at Intel versus Ryzen and talk about what $1,500 can get you. I have full parts list, benchmark tests, and recommendations for how to spend your money wisely. I've run each of these computers through 14 plus creator focused benchmarks, covering video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, motion design, graphic design, photo editing, 3D modeling, and more. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. If you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of any of these products, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So what can you expect from this video? I'm going to list out the parts with the average cost you can expect. Remember, these are not the actual price. Um, the prices may differ when you actually go to make your purchase. Um, these are estimates, not exact numbers. After that, I will discuss the build quality, then ease of installation, and then we will jump into the benchmark test to see how well $1,500 performs when talking Intel versus Ryzen. If you're curious how to build each one of these computers, I have complete build guides for each one, and you can check those out in the YouTube cards above. I have near identical test bench setups to ensure no funny business here. Spending $1,500 on Ryzen, we have the case, the Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX at around $99. For the cooler, the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 Pro at $89. For the motherboard, the Ryzen ROG Strix X570 eGaming motherboard at around $300. For the CPU, the Ryzen 9 3900X with 12 cores and 24 threads at around $420. For the GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM at $265. For the RAM, 32 gigs Kingston HyperX Fury at around $135. For the storage, one terabyte of NVMe SSD, Kingston KC2500 at around $200. And then for the power supply, we have the Be Quiet Straight Power 750. This all comes in around at around $1,500 um, to around $1,500 and maybe $25 tops when purchasing this and depending on the purchase price point. I actually saw some price points down at around $1,485. So like I said, with Black Friday coming up or could the Christmas holiday season, whatever it might be, you might be able to get some better deals. For the Intel 10 900K build, we have the case, which is the NZXT H510 at around $69. The NZXT Kranken X53 AIO cooler at around $129. The Asus Tough Gaming Z490 Plus motherboard at $199. The Intel Core i9 10 900K with 10 cores and 20 threads at around $550. The NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM at $265. For the RAM, 32 gigs of RAM Corsair Dominator Platinum at around $169. And for the storage, one terabyte of NVMe SSD, Kingston KC2500. All this comes in around $1,500 to $1,531, roughly, depending on when you purchase. And the power supply on the i10900K build was the Corsair 750. Again, if you're curious about the exact prices and availability, you can head down and check that out in the description below. Jumping into the build quality, let's start with the cases. These two cases both feature plastic and aluminum materials. The NZXT case has more aluminum, making it an overall more durable build. Durability award goes to the NZXT 510, but with the increased presence of aluminum creates a decreased airflow on the NZXT. The Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX has a large front vent, whereas the NZXT has only a side vent and space for two fans on the front panel. So in regards to running cool and having good airflow, I will give my award to the Pure Base. The NZXT has good airflow, but not to the level of the Pure Base. Regarding styling, I personally really like the fancier RGB lighting on the Pure Base. It's not too obnoxious, but still has a lot of personality. The NZXT H510 has much more discreet professional look. It would look much more suiting in a designer's office compared to perhaps the Pure Base. Both cases have similar port sets on them. The NZXT comes with a USB C, USB Type A, and a headphone mic jack combo. The Pure Base has a USB C, a USB Type A, headphone jack, and a mic jack. So those two are separated. Regarding the ease of installation, they were both very easy. Both had standoffs pre-installed, came with directions, and all the necessary screws. I will say, however, that the directions provided with the Be Quiet Pure Base were a little more clear and came with less extra parts, which to me is good because then I am not left guessing 
have I actually used all the correct parts? Do I need to use these parts? Did I use the wrong parts? It just made it more clear. The NZXT was great. However, the directions were a little more sporadic. They came in this like massive fold out treasure map uh, rather than the traditional booklet. This was fine. It just took me a little longer to find the information I needed for a successful build. Both cases were roomy and easy to navigate. I will give one huge bonus point to the NZXT for providing a modular grouped reset power LED plug. The Be Quiet came with all of those separate little tiny plugs, um, which makes it so cumbersome and confusing on how to plug those in to the little tiny plugs in the motherboard, which ultimately is the control for your power button on the top of your case. NZXT made this super easy, so thumbs up to you guys there. AIO or air cooler? That's the question a lot of people ask when doing PC builds. When it comes to the ease of installation, I believe the installation process of air coolers are much easier to install, and historically, they are more reliable and last longer. However, AIOs have often claimed much better styling and also can win on better cooling depending on the model you selected. The NZXT Kranken X53 is a great AIO. It cooled the 10900K to about 58 degrees Celsius during the 4K export. This is a solid temperature uh, moderation. However, the Ryzen 93900X is able to get down to 48 degrees Celsius during the 4K export using the Dark Rock Pro 4 um, air cooler that is in the Be Quiet case and the Ryzen build. Is that the case or is that the processor or the cooler? Um, I've yet to actually test this specific thing with doing all these different head to heads. So I'm not positive, but a cooler CPU using an easier to install air cooler makes me happy. So I'm gonna give my vote to the air cooler for ease installation, better cooling, um, and just more reliability. If you're going for styling, I would go AIO all the way, but if you're going for more ease of use or reliability, um, the air cooler is, is really hard to beat. Um, in this case, I will choose the air cooler. When considering a motherboard, there are people of far greater expertise than myself, but let me cover the basics to help you with your decision. Make sure you have at least two M.2 spaces for the NVMe SSDs to be installed. It makes it much easier and cleaner to wire up your system. Also, I want to say you want at least two PCIe slots because for me personally, this allows me to have a dedicated GPU and a built-in capture card for filming videos just like this. Um, and right now I'm using a software called vMix to record this video and I use the internal capture card to pull my audio and video into the system. Or you could use that extra slot to double up on your GPU for double the power using NVIDIA's SLI technology or AMD Crossfire. The Tough Z490 and the Strix X570 both offer this feature, so you're in good hands. Other than that, consider if the board has PCIe 4.0, NVMe, or 3.0. 4.0 will allow for faster transfer speeds and ultimately a faster computer. For instance, the Strix motherboard offers this, but the Tough motherboard does not. So if you choose the Tough motherboard, you can pick up the Samsung 970 Evo or Kingston KC 2500. But if you choose the Strix, you would benefit from the Samsung 980 Pro, which has PCIe 4.0 capability. And if you're curious about those exact uh, availabilities, like I said, you can check that out in the description below. When looking at Intel versus Ryzen, we are talking about a whole nother debate. In this video, I'm not going to go in depth. I'm rather looking at the overall collection of parts that you can put together at $1,500. If you want my thoughts on the ins and outs of pros and cons of each of the processors, I will link that up in the YouTube cards above. When it comes to performance, we are definitely going to get to real-world performance later in this video, so hang tight for that. Looking at installation, they are both simple and easy to install. Both builds come with the exact same GPU, the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super, a mid-range budget GPU that offers great price to performance capabilities, and once again, we will see exactly how this performs coming up later in the video. Once again, easy to install, no extra details here. The RAM, very easy to install for any set you purchase. Now, Corsair versus Kingston HyperX. When it comes to these two brands, in my opinion, it is up to visual preferences. I think the HyperX looks pretty rad, but so does the Corsair. Unfortunately, you can barely see the HyperX behind the massive air cooler, which is why I always give the styling award to the AIO. Note that another big benefit to choosing an AIO is the ability to swap and upgrade the RAM on the fly without having to pull apart the entire air cooler move things around, put the RAM in, and then reinstall the air cooler. SSDs are something that uh, are kind of preferential as well. You know, what do you consider reliable? What do you not consider reliable? For me personally, my favorite brands are Samsung, Sabrent, Kingston, and Western Digital. Outside of the disclaimer about PCIe 3.0 versus PCI 4.0, there's a bunch of other details that people kind of debate on, but at the end of the day, just pick a name brand uh, quality SSD that you've done a little research on, and you'll be in good hands. Like I said, my recommendations, these are some of the ones that I found have to be reliable, perform well, 
and have given me good results over the long run. Now, um, when it comes to choosing a power supply, in these two builds, um, we have a Corsair RMX 750 and a Be Quiet Straight Power 750. Those are both gold power supplies. I recommend getting at least a silver if you can swing a gold. These just make sure that you have a good, reliable power supply. You don't want your power supply to go bad. If your power supply does go bad, it could end up frying a part or your entire system. So it's something you wanna make sure you have a quality power supply. And for the main event, let's dive into the performance benchmarks to see from a performance standpoint, what you will get for $1,500. If you want a multi-core beast, then the clear choice is the Ryzen 3900X. On Geekbench 5 single core performance, it is close with the 3900X getting a 1263 and the 1900K at 1420. But as far as multi-core performance goes, the 3900X scores a 11,544 and the 10900K scores a 9,805. So you can see here that the clear winner in this category is the 3900X. Now, when considering the insane multi-core performance of the 3900X, remember that this only matters if you are in fact running multiple programs at the same time or running programs that highly benefit from multi-core processors processes. Um, use cases such as gaming barely take advantage of multi-core performance, and something like Premiere Pro does not even benefit from it that much either. The 10900 k closes the gap on Cinebench R20 by scoring a 6,378 versus the Ryzen 3900X scoring a 7,016. Regarding Cinebench, either CPU would be a great choice. Now let's dive into the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. I will use this benchmark to see how well a computer will be able to handle Adobe design suite by testing it in the most system intensive software in the suite, which is Photoshop. Starting off with the Ryzen 3900X, it scored an 856, a very respectable score, meaning that this computer will cut through any Photoshop task like a fine Benchmade knife. But the 3900X better watch out because the 10900K topped its score by almost 100 points, scoring a 937. So for graphic design, these builds will dominate. You will experience smooth workflows in Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, and other graphic design programs like Sketch, the Affinity Suite, and Figma. Regarding motion design, I'm also using the Puget Systems After Effects and After Effects Render Benchmark to test these two computers. On the standard After Effects test, we can see that the Ryzen 3900X picked up a 925 and the Intel i9-10900K came in with a 981. Great scores for both builds with the 10900K pulling slightly ahead. The 10900K and the Ryzen 3900X stay neck and neck for the After Effects Render Test with the 3900X getting a 527 and the 10900K with a 541. Let's take a look at some 3D modeling benchmarks to see how well these two stack up against each other. The 3900X in Autodesk 3DS Max scored a 136.75 and the 10900K scored a 156.63. The 3900X in Autodesk Maya scored a 204.38 and the 10900K scored a 214.91. For PTC Creo, the 3900X scored a 134 4.37 and the 10900K a 139.11. For SolidWorks, the 3900X scored a 76.06 and the 10900K scored an 81.64. So if you're doing 3D modeling, um, the clear choice, not by a lot, but by some, would be the 10900K. Now onto the main event, video editing. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm going to use a 9-minute 4K clip, adding in some motion graphics, and then playing it all back in the timeline at full quality. This clip contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. The 3900X can play back full quality 4K footage in Premiere Pro timeline with only 35 drop frames, thanks to the GTX 1660 Super. During the 4K playback test with the 10900K, I saw zero drop frames. Both CPUs handle half quality and fourth quality playback with zero drop frames as well. Um, so you might see some more drop frames at full quality while multitasking, but you can easily switch it to half or fourth quality to continue to get smooth playback in the timeline. Um, or you can go ahead and upgrade to maybe like an RTX 2060 to guarantee that full quality playback. Now that will add 100 to $150 to your budget um yeah about that price point um but that will give you much better playback now to render out the 7200 motion design frames it took the 10900k 2 minutes and 52 seconds and the ryzen 3900x 3 minutes and 39 seconds moving on to the 4k export test i'm going to take a 9 minute 4k clip place it into premiere pro and davinci resolve then export both out at 1080p and 4k youtube settings now remember for davinci resolve we're using the free version of resolve 
For the 10900K, Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export, it took 3 minutes and 27 seconds, and for the 3900X, 3 minutes and 4 seconds. For the 10900K 4K to 1080p, it took 3 minutes and 40 seconds. For the 3900X, 2 minutes and 57 seconds. For the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K export, 10900K took 5 minutes and 11 seconds, and the 3900X, 4 minutes and 39 seconds. For the 10900K DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p export, it took 2 minutes and 58 seconds, and for the 3900X, 2 minutes and 23 seconds. Lastly, as I know, many of you want to know how are the thermals and noise during the 4K export. The 3900X comes out a bit quieter and cooler at 48 degrees Celsius and about 42 decibels during the export, whereas the 10900K was about 58 de degrees Celsius and about 48 decibels. Now, is this a matter of the case and the cooler? I have not personally run these exact tests, but overall we're seeing cooler and quieter performance out of the Be Quiet and the Ryzen 3900X versus the 10900K and the NZXT combo. And for the full thermal temps in the main applications, here are the thermal temps for each setup. If you're looking for a CPU with excellent export times out of Premiere Pro, killer 3D modeling benchmarks, and the best Photoshop scores I have personally ever seen on my channel, then you will want to consider the Intel Core i9-10900K build for around the $1,500 price point. But if you're looking for a slightly more affordable CPU with even better export times out of Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve insane multi-core performance while running cooler than the Intel CPU, then you will want to consider the Ryzen 9 3900X build at the $1,500 range. If you're curious about the exact availability or pricing of any of the products talked about in this video, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. And of course, if you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want more videos about the 10900K or the 3900X, you can click or tap the screen over here. And of course, if you wanna do the builds, you wanna follow along and do one of these builds, I have videos there as well. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.